Hello, in this uh, video we are going to have a summary of the book To Kill a Mockingbird. We are going to divide this video in three parts and in this one we are going to see chapters 1 to 10. We will see the most important things about chapters 1 to 10 from the book To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. To start the chapter number 1, the story is narrated by Jean Louis Finch, which is Scott. Right. In this case, uh, Scott, she had a grandfather who is uh, Atticus father, Simon Finch, right? He was a trader in a, in a, and he escaped religious persecution in England to build a successful farm in a, a, along as the bank of the Alabama River. Uh, the farm is named the Finch Landing, but in this case, uh, the farms helped the family for many years, but in this case, uh, the Finch right, in the situation of Atticus, who is Scott's father, he decided to leave the farm because he became a, a lawyer and he moved to Maycom, right, Maycom City. And Jack, who is uh, also Atticus' brother, Scott's uncle, he left also to become a doctor and the only one who stayed in the... Um, Finch's house is Aunt Alexandra. She takes care of the farm right now. And Atticus, he lives with his children in Macomb, Alabama. And as I said, Uncle Jack, he moved to uh, to become a doctor in Boston. A little bit later in chapter number one, we have a successful lawyer, Atticus Mel, make a solid living in Macomb to support his children, right, Jeremy Scott. And he's a widower. His wife died. And when the kids were very uh, small, basically Scott was two years old when her mother died. There is a woman who is very important in this part of the book. Her name is Calpurnia. She is an African-American woman. And she is the one who takes care of the children in the house. And she cooks for the family. In this case, Jem is four years older than Scott. And he has memories from his mom. But in this case, he doesn't like to remember his mom because that makes him feel like uncomfort uncomfortable, right? And he gets unhappy when he thinks about his mom. Uh, then we have in 1993, in 1933, Charles Baker Harris. There is a guy which is called Deal. He arrives to their home. Uh, he is a neighbor. He spends uh, the summer with his aunt, right, Miss Rachel Harborford. And uh, Deal does uh, not discuss his father but quickly becomes a uh, chief and, and a very good friend from Scott, right, in Jim. They become like a good group of three and they are doing a lot of crazy things together. But only a uh, deal comes only for the summer, only for vacation. In this case, uh, one of the suggestions that deal makes is that they could uh, draw, right, uh, Bull Radley from his house. I mean, Bull Radley is a guy who lives next door from the Finch house, and he is considered to be like a crazy guy. He has some mental problems, and he doesn't go out of his house. Uh, some people say that he is a killer, and etc. So all of these like rumors about his life. And Deal suggests that if they could make Deal go out of the house by doing some jokes and by doing some things, right? As I said, uh, Arthur Bull Radley is the guy who lives uh, next door, and he hasn't gone out of his house. And then, uh, according to the myth, right, Boo has had gotten into trouble and his father imprisoned him in a house as a punishment. He was crazy, right? And he was not uh, here from 15 years later when he stabbed his father with a pair of scissors. Basically, Boo Radley was like outside, uh, inside of the house with his dad and he got some scissors and he stabbed the scissors on his father and that's why, that is another reason why uh, Bull Radley doesn't go out of the house. Uh, the father of Bull Radley is Mr. Radley, right? Uh, but Mr. Radley didn't want to send Bull to an asylum, so he decides to have him uh, at home. Uh, at the very beginning of the book, Mr. Radley dies, and Bull, right, Bull Radley stays with his brother, which is Nathan Radley. Nathan Radley is the one who takes care of Bull right now, and they live in the same house, right? And 
eh, deal and the other kids are fascinated with the story of Will Bradley and they want to know more about him like very like curious kids right who want to see something strange from the other houses and uh, they go and they touch right the house they try to knock they throw some things and they try to make noise just for making a boo coming out of the house in chapter number two the story uh, changes a little bit because in this case September arrives and Dill uh, goes right to his house in, in Mississippi and the problem or the one of the first problems from Scott is that she is going to go to school for the first time and Jem He's a good brother and he helps her, right? And he takes her to school and uh, he likes to help her, right? Scott believes that her teacher, Miss Carolyn Fisher, deals with poorly students, right? Uh, one of the problems is that Mrs. Caroline uh, doesn't like the way in which Scott uh, behaves, right? Uh, and also Miss Caroline is from Winston County which make the children believe she cannot be completely trusted. This place was not a good place, they said, and they didn't like that place, so that's why they didn't like the teacher too much. Uh, Miss Caroline also concludes that Atticus has taught uh, Scott how to read, and she makes Scott feel guilty because she knows how to read, even though she's in first grade, and she knows how to read. And by that time, kids are not supposed to read, so that's why the teacher gets angry, and she thinks that her father uh, helped her to do that. But in this case, Calpurnia is the one who taught uh, Scott how to read. In chapter number two, there is also another situation, which, uh, which is that Walter Cunningham, this is a guy whose family is very poor, they don't have any money, and in the other video that I created, you will see that description about the Cunninghams. They don't have money, so uh, the teacher uh, offers him a quarter of dollar to go downtown and to buy something. But in the case, in this case, uh, Walter is not able to pay, and Scott like talks to the teacher and explains that he's a Cunningham, and the Cunninghams don't have money to pay back. Because of that, because of that, the teacher gets very angry and she punishes Scott. And because she is telling bad things about Walter, and uh, she is right, but she didn't have to say this, so the teacher basically punishes uh, Scott, right? And she sent them, she sent her to the corner, actually. So well, in the in the previous uh, video, we explain about the Great Depression in the 1930s which make, uh, in this case, the Cunningham is a family that was affected by that, so they didn't have money. And when Atticus, the father of Scott, uh, he made some legal services to them, uh, the Cunninghams used to pay with firewood and some hickory nuts and some greens. So that is how they, this, they pay. In chapter number three, we will see another problem, right? Remember that the teacher uh, sent a uh, Scott uh, to the corner because she was punished because she told about uh, Walter Cunningham's situation. After this uh, problem, Scott was really angry and at lunch she roused Walter's face on the deed. She, the girl, Scott, she hits the boy on the dirt and by the time this time, Jem, the brother, he comes back and invites a uh, like separates them and he invites Walter to join them at the house for lunch right so he's invited uh, the two children uh, with Walter met Atticus at home for lunch so the in this case Walter Cunningham the kid he goes to the house and they eat at the Finch's house right uh, in this case Walter talks about with Atticus about farming and all these things some things that uh, Jem and Scott don't understand. In the book, you will see the way they speak, like like a very like a southern accent, like uh, very difficult to understand when you listen to them. But that is the way they 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 speak. Uh, at the table, Walter asks for some molasses, and he is uh, reprimanded by Scott. I mean, when he is asking for more food, Scott tells him, "No, why are you why why are you looking for more food? Right? This is my house and." 
Scott makes him feel bad, actually. But in this case, uh, Calpurnia helps, right, in this situation. Calpurnia, you remember that she is the one who takes care of the kids at the home. And she helps and then she tells that, uh, and she calls Scott to the kitchen and she tells that, she tells her that uh, Walter is a guest and he has to respect him and he has to help him as a guest, right? And Calpurnia tells Scott to be better hostess, right? And she cannot behave, uh, she will be called to, uh, she will be punished, right? If she doesn't behave to with Walter in the kitchen. Uh, then, when they come back to school, Miss Caroline is terrified when a ball uh, crawls right from Boris Eagles' hair. Boris Eagles is another guy, another situation very similar to Walter Cunningham. The Eagles are a family that are considered white trash according to the uh, 1930s situation. They were considered white trash because they were very poor and they didn't offer anything. In this case, the father of Boris, Mr. Ewell, Walter, uh, no, he's not Walter, Mr. Ewell, he uh, was an alcoholic man and he didn't help the family. Uh, Boris, in this case, this little boy, he has also a sister, right, who is Mayela, Mayela Ewell. Uh, the characteristic of the Ewells and all the family of the Ewells is that uh, they go to school, but only the first day, and then the rest of the year they disappear. So the teacher is very uh, like <clears throat> terrified because there is that bug right coming from his hair, and it is because he doesn't take a shower, and um, and even the Ewells are a little bit or much poorer than the Cunninghams, and they are less respected by the community. As I said, they are considered quite trash, very poor people. Imagine these types of like this like. Ways of calling people are very uh, horrible, right? So in this case, Boris informed Miss Caroline that he only comes to class the first day of school and then he will never return. He leaves the classroom making vicious comments uh, at Mrs. Caroline, who is reducted to tears. Right? He makes Mr. Car Mrs. Caroline cry because of some comments that he makes in the book. You will see that. And also, uh, when Scott comes back, comes back home, she confesses that she does not want to return to school and Atticus uh, should teach her at home. I mean, she, consider that, she considers that school is not for her because of the situation that she had. The teacher was angry because uh, Scott knew how to read and the teacher didn't like that. And also Atticus explains that the school system, uh, how it works right, to Scott, and she's in good hands, he says, right? And he has to come back to school with the teacher. Uh, in chapter number four, the school year passes, right? The first year finishes, and uh, she's upset that the class, right? Uh, that the class moves so slowly. I mean, she's she already knows how to speak, and she's very angry because the the class moves so slowly with the topics and etc. When walking home from school one day, Scott passes to the Radley house and sees something, uh, some tin foil. In the knock hole of the tree. This is where the the most important part of the knock hole starts. Probably, probably you might think what a knock hole is. And uh, there is a tree, right? An oak tree, and inside of the tree, in the middle of the tree, there is a hole, like where the bears sleep, probably. So inside of that hole that the tree had, there were those tin foils. Uh, in this part, uh, basically, those were some presents like the kids received, right? So in front of the Radley house, right? And she reaches into the knot hole and finds the two pieces of double mint chewing gum. There was, that was, let's say, the first uh, present they found in the knot hole, chewing gum. And then she takes her to the house and she eats it. And when uh, she comes... Uh, also, a little bit later, on the last day of school, right, uh, Jem and Scott find two old Indian hails and pennies hidden in the same knot hole. So that was the second present. The first one was the, the chewing gum, and Jem makes Scott like to spit right, the chewing gum because he says that the chewing gum is not good, and etc. And then the second one is that the, they find some Indian pennies, right, Indian hail pennies hidden uh, on the same knot hole. Uh, after this, right, the, as I said, the school year passes, the first grade of Scott passes, and summer arrives, and Dill, 
right? The friend returns, returns to make them. And on the first games, the children play involving rolling one another along the sidewalk in a tire. I don't know if you have seen the movie The Grown Ups, right? When the second one, when they have like a big like tire and one of them get inside, gets inside of the tire and start rolling down the tree, the street, I'm sorry. And then uh, that is what they were playing, right? They get inside of the tire and they roll right down the hill. So that was the game they used to play in chapter number four. Also, uh, in this case, uh, since they were playing, right, it's like down, going down the hill, uh, Scott loses the control. I mean, she was like pulling the, the tire, right, going down, and uh, she loses the control and rolls the tire in front of the Radley house, in front of Boo Radley's house, right? And the, ch the children were really panicked. And they have seen the shades move from the outside through they were being watched. So they thought that they, there was somebody coming from them. And the children were, uh, they invented a uh, Boo Radley game also. And uh, talking about the hair right, from Boo, Boo's life, right? Eventually Atticus catches them playing Boo Radley. And he doesn't tell them. They cannot play the game, but both Scott and, and, and Life to pursue right, the secret in the game. So, uh, uh, in this case, Atticus is like very, let's say, pleasant. Right? He doesn't tell a lot of things to them. He's like a good father. He doesn't scold them. But in this case, they were playing this game, right? Like, boo, rather. Right? Like, like a scary game. So this is a little bit how chapter number four ends. In chapter number five, uh, the things change a little bit because Deal and Jim, they have a better relationship. Let's say this well, uh, and they forget, let's say, about Scott. They play about themselves and Scott is like put aside. So uh, she gets a little bit angry. And there is a woman, as a result, says, Scott feels left out and begins spending time with a neighbor, Miss Mori Atkinson, a widow with a talent for gardening. She has a beautiful garden and flowers and etc. So Miss Mori talks about a, her uncle, Jack, right? And she was the friend of her uncle. And she also talks about Bull Radley. And she says that Bull Radley, when he was a kid, he was very nice. He was not that sick. And probably the situation of Boo Radley is because of her father, that his father, her father was a little bit angry and like very strict, right? Uh, she tells that about uh, Boo, right? And all the rumors about his life are false. So she makes some clarification about Boo Radley. And in, by that time, a uh, Jem and a uh, Deal they plan to invite Boo Radley for an ice cream. So they send and they try to send an invitation uh, to invite him try to uh, to eat an ice cream, but of course Boo Radley will never accept. So when they are making the decision of inviting Boo Radley to an ice cream, um, they plan to put like the invitation in the middle of the window and in this case uh, Atticus appears and stops them to uh, and tell them that uh, stop tormenting the men, right? With their uh, notes of their Boo Radley game, also. So he tells them to not to do that. So in chapter number six, basically uh, the the summer is going to finish and deal is about to go to uh, to his house, right? And then the boys plan to do something very funny. They plan to snake over the house and and try to see, right, Boo Radley. And when they are inside, they see like a black shadow. And while they are inside of the house, they see the black shadow. They listen to the shoot of a gun, like, Pah! and then they run away because of that. And then while they are trying to jump the fence, uh, the uh, gem, gem loses his pants. His pants got stuck in the fence. And then he runs away because he uh, uh, sh listens to that noise and he co he feels that somebody's gonna shoot them. So that's why he uh, loses his pants and he left his his pants uh, behind. And now uh, because of the commotion, the children uh, know that they will miss right. And then basically when they uh, 
got right outside of the house of the Bull Radley. He goes to his house. Everybody listens to the shoot of the gun. So all the neighbors go outside and they start like thinking and saying what happened. And finally, uh, somebody tells them that uh, Mr. Radley saw a, a black and African American guy in the yard, and that's why he shoot. And Atticus by that time notices that. Uh, Jem, his son, didn't have the pants, right? And he asked them, hey, what happens, right, with your pants? And then Deal comes to rescue him, and Deal tells Mr. Uh, the father of, of Jem that he lost his pants because of a game they were doing. And they were playing matches, and that's because of that. Uh, they were playing cards, I'm sorry, and they lost basically the, the, the pants. That is basically how this part of chapter number six uh, goes. So, so the game they were playing is poker, and, uh, and Atticus is, wow, oh, why are you playing poker? So you are very young to play poker, and they say that they were just playing with matches. They were, they were not playing with money. And uh, a little bit later, Scott wants to get his pants back, right? So he decides to go to the Radley house uh, to find his pants, and to the surprise of him, uh, in chapter number seven. Uh, he finds uh, his uh, pants like folded and mended in the fence, right? Somebody folded them and mended them. So these events happen in chapter number seven when they found the, the, the pants were hung in the, in the fence. Also, uh, on the same uh, day, the two children are like in their way home from school and they discover, right, another treasure found, found in, a, in a knot hole. And there was a great ball of twine, and they take it because they think that it was not for somebody. Nobody claims it, right? And also Scott comes back to school to second grade, and she's not happy. But Jem encourages her, and she tells her that she's gonna do better. Uh, also, uh, they found some other mysterious things, like in the tree, they found two soap carvings that resemble themselves, right? Was like some soaps, right? And then the the boy carved them like two little kids, and they found them on the on the tree on the knot hole as well. So um, so le let's say uh, in this case uh, this was the place where uh, Boo Radley and the kids were having like some interaction. He left some presents for them, and then the kids took the presents, but presents, but they didn't have like any communication. The only thing was this, right? The presents that they had in chapter uh, at the end of this chapter. Uh, you will f see that the figures like they follow uh, they also have some chewing gum with the figures and also a spelling bee medal of an old pocket and an old pocket watch so there were so many presents <laughs> the following day after the discovery of all of these places they saw Mr. Nathan Radley who was Boo Radley's brother uh, filling the knot hole with semen so he was completing this part because he realizes that Boo Radley was going out of the house putting the presents for the kids, so he decided to cover the knot hole with cement. And the, let's say, the, the excuse, right, that Mr. Nathan gave was that the knot hole was dying, and that's why he put cement on it. In chapter number eight, a, a very important natural event happened, and it was the first time it snowed in Macon. So, and it was snowing, and the school was closed, and Jem and Scott, uh, remember that they had like a neighbor, Miss Morris, and she had a yard, so they decided to go to her yard to take all the snow, because they wanted to create a snowman, but in the book you will see that the snow was not enough, and then uh, they decided to make like a madman, right, they, they get some mud, and they decided to make like a madman, and they covered the madman with, uh, with snow, and the madman, the kid, said that he looked like Mr. Avery, like an unpleasant man that lives down in the street. And uh, then the kids go to the home after they finished creating the madman in a very nice day. At night, uh, Atticus wakes the kids up because the house in which uh, they were playing with um, Mr. Mrs. Maury's house was on fire. And all the neighbors were helping her. Uh, to take some things out of the house and to try to protect the house from from the, the fire but when the truck the fire truck arrived uh, the house was completely burned so that was like a very 
like two events that happened in chapter number eight, right? The kids created like a madman and they covered it with snow, and then Mrs. Maddie's house born as well. So after this situation, everybody was confused, right? Everybody was scared and they were like thinking other things. Uh, something important happened over here is that somebody uh, put a blanket in Scott's shoulders and she didn't have any idea of who did that. Jem realizes that Bull Radley was the one who put the blanket to Scott because it was very cold and Atticus also realized about that and they um, agree that they are, they, are, they are not going to say anybody that Bull Radley uh, put the blanket on Scott's shoulders. And then uh, Miss Marty, uh, she is in good spirit and she says that she's going to construct a, a very small house in her yard and she will live there. And, but Mrs. Marty says that she's also very surprised that Bull Radley get out of the house and he put the blanket to Scott. Uh, in chapter number nine, something important happens. There is a guy which is called Cec Cecil Jacobs. In the school, he is telling a lot of things to Scott about her father. And he, they, and he says that Atticus is a Negro lover. A Negro lover is the one, uh, is the person who loves African American people, right? And uh, he starts, as I said, insulting uh, Atticus, and Scott almost gets into a fight, uh, because in this, this is the part in which we know that Atticus has been asked to represent Tom Robinson, an African American man accused of raping a woman, a white woman, and uh, Atticus realizes that she can't. Uh, with the case, but he but he explains to Scott that he is the proper thing to do, right? To Tom, and Tom that Tom deserves the best difference he can offer because he knows that he was unfairly accused. Right? Uh, Scott uh, then Christmas uh, arrives, and Scott they uh, they have the visit of Uncle Jack, right? Um, Uncle Jack is the brother of uh, uh, Atticus. And Scott has the bad habit of cursing in front of Uncle Jack, uh, but this time Uncle Jack warns her that of the behavior and tells her that not to do this. And also, also for Christmas, uh, the family returns to the Finch Landing, right, to the place where Atticus lived at the beginning. And uh, there, there was Aunt Alexandra, and there was her grandson Francis. And Scott didn't like Francis. It's, the story says that Francis got on his nerves and they have some problems as well uh, and Scott thinks that Francis is like the most boring guy she has ever met so she doesn't like him and also uh, she receives some credit in the, in the form she gets some criticism from Aunt Alexandra because she tells Scott that she has to be like more like a lady but Scott uh, doesn't like to do this so one night uh, they were in the in the landing, and Francis, uh, the grandson of Aunt Alexandra, calls Dill a runt, and a runt is like like the smallest animal in a litter, so it was like a big a big offense. In this case, Scott gets really angry because he uh, tells uh, that to his brother, to her brother, and he beat him up, and Uncle Jack immediately. Banks Scott about the situation without listening to the, the side to her side of the story, and then uh, when they come back, uh, Scott tells Uncle Jack about what Francis said, and then uh, the uncle gets very angry with Francis, but everything has happened, and he also uh, talks to uh, Uncle Jack about the things that they have already told about her father as well. And also later, Scott uh, start telling Atticus that Tom Robinson is innocent, and but it would be impossible, right, to for a white jury to help him. In this case of the story, Scott starts realizing and feeling like uh, acceptance to Tom Robinson's situation, and she already knows that uh, he is unfairly uh, sent to prison, and she says that he is innocent, but. The white people will never help him because he is an African American guy. Uh, basically, then in chapter number ten, uh, this is gonna be the end of this uh, short video, the first part. Uh, in chapter number ten, 
we find that Scott starts like uh, <clears throat> feeling like really bad about her father because she says that her father is very old in comparison to the other fathers of the town and they feel embarrassed because Atticus, Atticus is uh, much older than uh, and that he enjoys reading too much and, and he doesn't like like hunting or fishing right uh, one day there was a mad dog uh, outside of the house uh, in the finch house right and the children were playing and they ran to the house and Calpurnia calls Atticus to quickly and then Atticus uh, he brings Hectate who was the sheriff of, of the Macon and Hect brings uh, like a rifle and he asks Atticus to shoot the dog and then Atticus uh, shoots the dog from a very long distance so that's, that is something uh, really important that uh, the kids learn from his father he shoot the dog from a really long distance and the kids were impressed about that ability that his father had, right? So later, Miss Mori confesses that when Atticus was young, he was the best uh, shoot in the country. And uh, the townspeople called him One Shoot Finch, right? That was his nickname. Uh, that's important to remember. And also now, uh, Scott is like very eager to brag about his father's ability, which is shooting. And, uh, but Jen tells her to keep that as a secret because Atticus didn't want people uh, to know this and in this part of the book uh, they ask him about why you don't shoot things right uh, and then there is an expression in the book that says it is a sin to kill a mockingbird and the, the symbol of the mockingbird appears in this part of the book and they said that the mockingbirds are like animals that can't defend themselves and that they can't uh, that they don't bother anybody. They just go fly and uh, are very beautiful birds. But people uh, say that it is a sin to kill a mockingbird because mockingbirds don't do anything bad. So in this case of the in this part of the book, uh, the symbol of mockingbird is revealed, right? And that's why the name of the book, "To Kill a Mockingbird." In this case, uh, Robinson. Right, was a uh, considered the mockingbird. Right, Tom Robinson was considered the mockingbird because he couldn't defend himself, and he was just accused, and that's why uh, the book has this name. So that is all for the first part of the video, chapter number ten, and then we will see another part from chapter number eleven to chapter twenty a little bit later. So thank you for watching. People.